Hello fellow giant growers. Uh, I've decided to uh, join the YouTube crowd and uh, uh, start a YouTube channel uh, to document my season, uh, document how uh, things go in my patch. Um, so just thought I'd uh, start out and introduce you to the patch and what I got going on here. Um, I know it's, uh, it's the middle of the year. It's June 20th. It's actually Father's Day in 2021. Uh, I am enjoying uh, a beverage from my new cup that my kids had got me. Um, coffee, pumpkins, repeat. Um, and that is uh, quite true in my household. Um, I do spend a lot of time in the patch, uh, but I do what I can uh, quickly in the patch so that I can spend time up there with them as well. Uh, so uh, let me introduce you to my plants and uh, let you know what's going on. So uh, right here we have the 463 tile squash plant. Um, you'll notice a fan down there. Um, I uh, have uh, pollinated a squash. Um, I pollinated it last Thursday. So today is let's see here, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Today is day three on that. Um, and it's a little bit smaller than a, a uh, baseball uh, currently. A uh, nice long stem on it. Uh, the fan that I have going, uh, you might be able to hear that. Uh, the fan that I have going is to dry the, uh, the main stem, uh, the main vine that I'd cut off, um, and also to keep that uh, blossom end dry. Um, I just cut that off a little bit ago. Um, a deer actually ate the tip of it. I've never had one mess with my giant pumpkin plants before but this year they did uh, that right there is the secondary coming off and i will retrain that as my new main vine uh, you'll notice around my patch i now have an electric fence um, i put that around the whole patch because of the deer um, i was away for the weekend and uh, just come back today so you kind of see some disarray here with the vines uh, we had some wind and some rain last night um, that vine was actually turned over the other way and I flipped it back over and reburied it uh, I've got to do the same to that one um, and um, I believe this plant my pumpkin plant down here fared a little bit better with the wind um, I'm sure that those trees back there helped that one out uh, this plant is the 1747.5 handy um, and it is, uh, I pollinated it on Friday, um, so this one is two days after pollination. Um, and you'll see that one there is uh, a little bit bigger than a golf ball. Um, you'll see uh, the secondary is coming back towards me. The main vine is going straight away. I just uh, got my S-curve done today. Um, and right there is the tip of the main and you can see a baby there that'll be opening up in about four or five days uh, both of these plants are currently about 250 square feet um, i have not purposely terminated any secondaries yet um, if you look closely you'll, you'll see here that the uh, that secondary will be getting cut here shortly um, I say purposely because that secondary right there um, has been cut off. Um, actually, it was broke off by myself when I was uh, trying to bury some vines and uh, tried to pull a tendril off, and I broke the stem, so I went ahead and finished breaking it off the rest of the way. Um, again, both plants are about 250 square feet. Um, hopefully, over the next 20 or so days, um, they will fill in uh, to closer to 900 square feet. Um, I've got, uh, I believe, 18 secondaries behind my squash and 20 secondaries behind my pumpkin. Um, so we will see what happens. Um, I've never counted secondaries. I've always gone by either how far out from the main or from the stump um, to pollinate or uh, square footage of plant. Um, so um, the plants are on the smaller side, but they've got secondaries behind them. So um, I think I'm going to go with them and we'll see what happens. I may end up uh, pollinating that one as well. And then we'll kind of go from there as to which one I really want to grow out. Um, I pollinated uh, my 1747 with my 1699 from last year. Uh, the 1747 produced a 23% heavy for Steve Handy last year. And my 1699 was 22% heavy, so I'm hoping to uh, produce some heavy genetics, heavy seeds um, with this pollination. Um, my squash plant was pollinated with a 580 Neuenhoff. Uh, that 
uh, squash plant uh, is a true green squash. Um, there is no orange, no pumpkin genetics. Uh, back into at least 93, 94. Um, I didn't go back further than that because I don't believe pumpkins were uh, introduced before that. So um, I wanted to bring some true green back into it uh, before any pumpkin was reintroduced back into it for more size. Um, if you follow squash genetics, um, you'll know that uh, several years ago, I, I don't know exactly when, but uh, the um, a pumpkin was crossed with a squash to produce a bigger squash fruit. Um, so now you end up with a uh, squash that can actually start out as, out as a squash and end up as a pumpkin uh, at a way off um, just by the coloring and the change uh, color over time sometimes. So, um, but uh, I'm hoping that me introducing the uh, green back into it will help uh, solidify that green in uh, the seeds of this fruit. Um, You'll see my, my watering totes. I have 10 of those. Uh, I'll get into a, a new another video uh, showing, detailing how I uh, water my plants. Um, and then you also see this earth mat. Um, these are 219 uh, pumpkin plants. Uh, we're going to grow and uh, sell some um, uh, jack-o'-lanterns this year. Uh, there is, I believe, nine or ten different varieties here. Uh, so we're going to see what happens. Um, you'll see my my uh, electric fence goes all the way around all of them, around the whole patch, simply because uh, of the deer. I was not planning on putting around my giants, but uh, I decided to this year uh, after they ate that mane. Um, this weedy part right here um, is actually some corn. I have some uh, different types of corn growing in there. Um, you can probably see some of it. Um, it should uh, hopefully take off here and we get some good height here. Uh, knee high by the 4th of July is what they say. Um, I, it's going to be close, but we'll see. Uh, until next time, guys, grow them big.